Hey guys, welcome back to Roleplay Roulette, and we're at Gen Con for the week. Four days in gaming, the high holy season, gamer Ramadan, if you will. Well, we here at Seven Realms Production just happen to be lucky enough to live pretty close to its backyard, and those of us who were lucky enough to go would like for everybody else to get to share in the experience. So for the next week, we'll be releasing videos about our experiences there, and hopefully we came up with some insidery type information. We've got a few demos to show you, cool new games that are coming out, and some interviews with some pretty amazing people. So if you didn't get to go, or if you did get to go and maybe didn't get to see everything, we're going to do our best to bring you the Gen Con experience. Up first is a demo we played from a little game called Kitsune of Foxes and Fools. It looks really cool, and the guys were super nice. They told us all about it, and we'd really like it if you guys would check them out. So here's Kitsune of Foxes and Fools. Hi, I'm Jacqueline, and I'm here playing a demo of Kitsune, Foxes and Fools, and this gentleman, Will, is kind enough to run me through it. Hello there. All right, so what are we doing? Well, the whole premise of Foxes and Fools is there are a number of foxes that are trying to achieve their nine tails and become Kitsune elders. And in order to do this, they have to impress their elders by scheming against fools and simple people out in the world. So we're going to start off by picking a character. We have a number of them here. They each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Okay, then I'm going to go with April. April. Excellent choice. So now that April is the fox that's going to be going out into the world and trying to impress the Kitsune elders, she's going to have to scheme against a number of foolish mortals that have sinned in some way or another. You can see wrath, greed, gluttony, pride, a little bit more wrath there just to make things fun. Um, now the scheming is represented by rolling two dice. The white die is added to your wit score at the top there, and the black die's result is added to the foolishness, the level of the fool there. Okay. So why don't you pick a fool and um, scheme against and roll some die. We're going to go with the beautiful jerk. The bigoted jerk. The bigoted jerk. Should I roll both dice? Roll both dice. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. You roll a 7, 8, 9, 10. They have a 4 plus 9 is 13. Ever so slightly edged out by your opponent there. And for that, you have been spanked. Ah, uh, well, meditate for two turns. In addition to your fox's whip, there's also a, a character trait here called witchery. And that determines how much fox fire your character has. And there's two ways to get witchery back. Every round, there's a drip of one. Or you can take a turn and not scheme against any of the fools and meditate, and it will reveal you all the way back up to your maximum. Okay. So, unfortunately, you've been spanked and you can't sit down in order to meditate. So, that's going to complicate things. All right. But you were a naughty little kutsune. Yeah. Naughty kutsune? Why, those never show up. No, no. It's a strange concept, that one. Right. Now, the real benefit to having this fox fire around is that you can spend them one for one to increase or decrease any fox's wits. Oh. So if you are trying to get a tail and you need a little help, you can give yourself an edge with some witchery. Okay. Or if you really, really, really don't want your opponent to get a tail, <laughs> you can dump foxfire on them and make his it a lot harder for him. Nice. To, yeah. All right. I'm going to go against the bully. Ah. Not that we have, who made the game have any experience with bullies before. So I have an eight. You have an eight, and he has a nine. Then I'm going to, and they spend one for one, correct? One for one. Okay, then I'm going to spend two Foxfire right. to you, give me the bonus again. Usually you have to spend the Foxfire before you roll, oh. but this is a demo, so we'll let okay. it slide and say you've, <laughs> you've kicked this bully right in his face, much as they so often deserve. That brings out a petty thief. And? And for having succeeded, you gain your first Foxtail. Tail, fantastic. Bada bang. Now the thing about foxtails is you can assign them to increase any one of your stats. Oh. So you can bump up your wits with it, or you can bump up your foxfire and have a bigger pool of mana there, or you can even increase your wisdom score. Now the, the tricks is the, the next kind of big mechanic of the game, where you have your, your maximum wisdom score increases the size of your hand, hand of tricks. Okay. 
once you spend it, does it uh, disappear? Do you have to start over? No. Once you spend it, it still counts as a victory okay. token, but it, it, it's basically your character level. Okay. Then I'm going to... You're closer to winning, and you are more powerful. All right. I'm going to spend it on my... And as this is also the start of the new round, you have the, your, your drip one of one Foxfire there. All right. And you have three cards that you can pick up and then look at and see if there's anything that might help you against this next set of fools. You know, it is important to note that you can spend all of your cards on one turn and they will also drip back to you once per round. Okay. Do you, and you spend them before or after your roll? Uh, you try and prepare everything before your roll. It's like, think of it like a heist movie. You're, you're planning, you're plotting, you're picking your target, you're doing your research, you're preparing, and then the heist goes off. Then I'm going to spend a trick for a brilliant plan, since we're talking about scheming. Excellent call. <laughs> That'll double your total result. So with a minimum of four, four doubled to eight, plus whatever your roll is doubled. Fantastic. I'm going to go against the fat slob. The fat slob. So you have a total of four, five, six, seven, seven double to 14, 14 versus their four. Nice. Oh, yeah, that fat slob had a poor roll there. If there are other foxes around the table, you can choose to antagonize or accomplice with one of the foxes instead of doing a turn like scheming or preparing or meditating. Um, you pick another fox and say, I'm going to antagonize you or I'm going to accomplice with you. If, you're, if you accomplice, you're helping them out. You add your wit score to their wit score. If you both succeed and you would both gain a tail, you both get tails for the one roll. If you antagonize, you say I'm going to antagonize you, they, the fox that they choose has your wit score added to the foolishness, so it's a much tougher fight. Towards the end of the game, it's all table politics. You know, these big concepts are important at the beginning, but it, it, it's people ganging up on each other, and when everybody has eight tails, all all hands are, all bets are off. It's, I can only it's, imagine. Resources. It's cutthroat. With, with eight more points on the board, you can have a lot more. Foxfire, you can have a lot more tricks in your hand, or you can just tag them all in wits and barrel your way through. Hi, I'm Charles. I'm the art director of Tsune of Foxes and Fools and Bad Decisions, a game kickstarting now on Kickstarter. Kitsune can be found at kitsunecg.com. It's got a lot of wonderful art done by me and a couple of my friends. I'm Ian Price, his brother. I did the words in these games, and I am one-third of Diamond Dust Dreams, the company we formed to put out Kitsune and Bad Decisions. And I hope that you will come to Kickstarter to find bad decisions and make some bad decisions with us.